One of the real challenges we face every week on this show is that we want to tell you all the news that's relevant to atheists, right? But we also want to do so in a way that doesn't scare you off. Because let's face it, there's only so much sky is falling a person can take, even when the sky is really falling. And so every time I got to start talking about Donald Trump shit again, there's a part of me going like, haven't you had enough? But you haven't. Because for some fucking reason, the media is barely covering the terrifying promises he's making every time someone puts a microphone in front of him. On the day this episode drops, Trump is going to be speaking in front of the world's largest assembly of Christian media executives in Nashville, Tennessee. And while I don't know exactly what he's going to say, based on what we've heard out of him so far on the campaign trail, my guess is that we're going to hear more about the fight against Christian persecution that he claims is so rampant in modern America. In a December speech in Iowa, he promised that upon taking office, he would, quote, create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias, end quote. Maybe he could call it the sacrilege squad. Now, you might be tempted to dismiss this as akin to the voter fraud task force. Remember that when he promised he was going to set some people to work, find all that fraud that cost him the popular vote, and then they diddled their dicks for a few months and eventually released a report that said, yeah, there's no voter fraud. Well, you know, surely there's no more Christian persecution in this country than there is voter fraud. So mightn't this new task force wind up in a similarly dick diddling situation? But of course, that is a dangerous fantasy to entertain because it's been a long time since a Christian said Christian persecution and meant the persecuting of Christians. Christian persecution has become code for made me acknowledge the humanity of LGBTQ people. So when this task force goes out in the world looking for Christian persecution, it'll find restaurants being forced to serve gay people. It'll find pride flags on display. It'll find trans people trying to take a shit in a public restroom and more, right? Because this trick works on all political beliefs. Remember how quick their objections to masking and vaccines became religious in nature? Right. So that task force will also find probably like women exercising their reproductive rights in stores, making contraceptives freely available in schools, teaching about the history of slavery. And all of that will be called Christian persecution. All of that is being called Christian persecution. See, Team Trump and the sycophantic GOP that follows him, they're often faulted for not having a platform. Right? How serious can a political party be if they have no platform? How could you even know what you're voting for? People look at that and they see the very definition of a naked power grab. They just want power for the sake of power. And by failing to establish a platform, they're admitting as much. But it's actually worse than that. Right? The, the people who say that they're just after power for power's sake, those people are being too kind. They're after power to do evil shit with it. The reason they don't articulate a platform isn't because they don't have one. It's because writing it down would rob their supporters of any kind of plausible deniability. What they really want is so bigoted and backwards that writing it down would sever any chance they had at appealing to the disengaged centrists. Hell, even most of their ardent supporters don't want to admit to some of this shit publicly. But some of them do, which is why we can so confidently guess what they're after. Russell Vaught, who was uh, Trump's director of the Office of Management and Budget and is widely seen as Trump's most likely chief of staff if he wins a second term, he produced a series of bullet points on what he wants out of the second Trump administration. And one of the bullet points is just the words Christian nationalism. Just those two words. That's a whole bullet point. He also wants to place religious restrictions on immigration, limiting it to people who, quote, accept Israel's God, laws, and understanding of history, end quote. Trump also talked openly about bringing Michael Flynn back into the government. Last time we saw Mikey, he was touring the country using QAnon conspiracy theories to recruit what he was calling an army of God. William Wolf, another Trump insider that's helping shape the agenda for the next go round, openly advocates for the outlawing of same sex marriage, a national ban on abortion and a strict reduction on access to contraception. This is a guy who wrote in a Daily Caller piece about immigration, quote, Jesus Christ wasn't an open border socialist, end quote, despite that being a wrong on both counts and b completely irrelevant to the shaping of immigration policies. See, what happened here is that the white Protestant Christian bigots who enjoy the top spot in America's caste system for the last 
fucking forever, took a look at the future, and they realized that there was no damn way that their views were ever going to regain the majority in their lifetimes. So they took the list of political beliefs they had, they scratched out the word political at the top, and they wrote in the word religious. So now forcing them to submit to the will of the majority is no longer democracy, it's persecution. Of course, the only way to make that stick is with a government that's willing to wink along with your imaginary plight. And the only way to get that is with Christian nationalism. So sorry for sounding the alarm while your ears are still ringing from the last time we sounded it. And sorry for the fact that I'm just going to keep doing that shit for the next nine months. We're fighting against no less than a theocratic dictatorship, and I will be damned to hell if I'm going to err on the side of too quiet about that shit.